Hi guys, it's Anders. Today's Logic Pro tutorial, we're going to look at the loudness meter. Now this is something that's really important if you are having to master your own tracks or put them right to that finish stage where they're going to go on things like Spotify, because you're going to want to understand the luffs and the way this meters so that you can see that you are not exceeding a limit or over compressing your sound. Reason being, Spotify has a set limit. If you're exceeding that and your mix sounds good to you, but is much louder, it will reduce that volume in Spotify. You'll have reduced dynamics because you've already compressed and crushed that track down. And then it's just gonna sound less punchy and less full and it could have sounded much better because you're just losing all that level again. Um, lots of the services are doing this. Apple Music does it, Spotify does it, YouTube does it. They all take that sort of the RMS and they work on a LUF system and they reduce it down to certain levels. So it's just a way for you to be sure you're not exceeding that and understand a bit more about reading those levels. Let's get into that. Say my name aloud. Hello guys, so here we are in Logic and we're going to discuss the loudness meter and a good way for you to use it when you're coming to the final mix or even the mastering stage of your music. Now, the loudness meter is built into Logic and it looks like this. It's in the newer version of Logic, so they've been really good in creation with the GUI and it's completely scalable, which is really nice. I tend to have it quite small, so I can just put it off to one side here. Now for this example, I've just grabbed a master I've done for a upcoming EP and I've had to get that to sit at a certain level to get the right sort of sound so it's going to translate correctly on today's streaming systems. And the loudness meter is an, a key part of getting that just right. I did do a vlog on mastering this particular EP. If you want to check that out, I will link it in the description and hopefully in a tab just at the top now. I've also got Isotopes Insight loaded up here for us as well, so we can take a look inside that. And that just gives us a much more detailed look. And I can show you a couple of things that have changed over time as well. So. Right now, Spotify, um, YouTube, for example, soon to be SoundCloud are all aiming for a integrated LUFS volume of about minus 14. Now, LUFS is loudness unit full scale. It's a, a relatively new developed way of measuring overall loudness of audio. The key before this used to be RMS, which is the root mean squared, which is giving us an average level. LUFS is similar to this, but it takes into account how we actually perceive audio as well. Um, we're not going to go into the whole details of it. There are plenty of documentation out there, and a lot of the DAWs now that include LUFS meters will include the uh, way that it is developed in their manuals. If you want to have a read up of that, it will be a very long thing for me to discuss right here. So we're just going to have a little listen to this track and I'm just going to start the LUFS meter. Now my aim was minus 14. I'm pretty sure this tips a little bit over, but I'm not concerned because it gave me the perception that I wanted and it retained the dynamics I was after and hasn't crushed it in any way. So let's have a quick listen. I've just got the my favourite bit of the track loops. So we should have a quick short bit of that. And you just noticed on the LUFS meter, it's going to give us the M and S, which is mid and side. And then there's an I on the right hand side. The I meter won't register unless we click start and that is integrated. I'll explain that very shortly. Right now I'm focused, I ain't stopping till I reach all my quotas Some of them are liars, some of them are jokers Still stay hot like stolen motors Won't see what I've got in my hand like it's poker Leave them paranoid, heavy needs smoker Boy talking, they turn like rotor Snitch to the feds and then it's all over How you mean, how you mean? I was on road, man, I'm making a cream How you mean, how you mean? You was in your mum's house, still getting lean Okay, so you see when I stop playing the audio Mid and side have disappeared But the integrated is still there and if I were to pause now, it also remains there. So you can see that I've got a minus 13.7, meaning I'm 0.3 decibels off target on my master here. 
that is not a huge amount and it doesn't affect audio in the way that as if I was 0.3 over on a peak where you'd get distortion. This is purely the average loudness. Now, on this loudness meter, you can grab this little yellow bar here and you can adjust the level. So you can give yourself that target. If you were going for broadcast audio, you may in fact have to bring this down to minus 16. And Apple Music with its targeted loudness on is actually a minus 16 LUF platform. But for this case, we're going to minus 14. Now, as I just mentioned that Apple Music is currently going to minus 16, that means if I work to minus 14 LUFs here, that is going to be reduced by approximately two LUFs when played on Apple Music with matching on. If you're not having the audio match on, it will go up to 14 um, depending on the material you're playing. The minus 16 allows it a scope of a couple of LUFs to match tracks one after the other so they all sit around the same level. This is what Spotify does as well, but it matches to the minus 14 instead. So it's as simple as this really for getting what you're after in terms of checking that your LUFs level is not massively exceeding on your master. Now, the mid and side is the integrated LUFs for your mid, so all of your mono material and then all of your side material. The integrated is then the combination of the two. When you sum together your mid and side, you may find that you get a spike in level. And this is so you can check that when someone is listening to the stereo playback, it's not going to hugely exceed. It will also make you aware of any problems in your mix. Now, the reason I wanted to bring up Insight as well is we can also monitor here our peaks and the RMS, which was the old standard. And if you listen to tracks that were mastered, say, in the early 2000s, they were mastered with RMS in mind and they were mastered for absolute loudness. So you will see something like minus eight root mean squared loudness in some cases as much as rms of three which is giving a very very loud overall sound and a very very small dynamic range however you'll see here where i've gone to the 13.7 integrated luffs marker there is a lot of dynamic movement now the peak and rms meters are on the left hand side here the peak meters are going to be up near the zero and the RMS is the darker colour, which will be lower down here. So we can see here that my RMS at the moment I paused there was around minus 15 decibels. And I've got a lot of peak fluctuation as well in level because a lot of the dynamics here have been kept in check. Now if we had limited this track a lot harder and it had been compressed as much to give us say that minus 8 RMS rather than the almost minus 15 that I'm having here, all of these dynamics here would have been cut off and it would look something more like that. Now that's okay you're not going to lose huge clarity in sound and on a low level system and things like earbuds that's going to sound completely fine however when it comes to reduce it down all these dynamic all the dynamic range here that has been lost wouldn't be retained you would simply be reducing it in level and it would have all of these dynamics cut away and it wouldn't be what we're after at all it would just be cutting this dynamic off we would lose a lot of the punchiness and that's what's happening now. And this has been to combat the loudness war and combat that situation happening and just continual loudness and loudness and loudness. If you're unaware of what the loudness war was, which in my opinion is starting to fade now, just Google the loudness war and Metallica. There is a fantastic example of how over compressed that album was that there was almost no dynamics left by the time people finally got that music 
Guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you and given you a better understanding of the loudness meter and the LUFS standard. If it has, please bash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next video.